Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, everybody. Happy Monday. Hello, everyone. Listen, we missed you guys over the weekend. It was a long weekend, right? It was. Uh, but in today's video, we are going to talk about, or at least help you understand how to change proof your business. Yep. And just give me a second. I don't know what is going on with, yeah, I love technology. Yeah. Is it doing a thing where everything disappears again? It's doing this thing where um, the Zoom like room won't minimize for me. Oh, it's really bizarre. Like I don't know what it is, but yeah, whatever. My little bar disappears at the top. You have to like exit full screen. It's really weird. There we go. I just yeah. Okay, I'm all set. So thank you for bearing with us. I always say you get you love technology when it's working. When it's working, right. Right. So, yeah, we're going to talk about change proofing your business. And, you know, Christina and I, the PIP sisters, we are here to help network marketers fix their business. That's it. Bottom line. We know that you are out there. You're in the network marketing space. There's millions upon millions of you. 95 to 98% of you are struggling. We are help, here to help you fix your business. And one of the ways that you want to, or one of the things you want to focus on is change proofing your business. What do we mean by that? So, let's talk about different kinds of changes that happen in the network marketing industry or in your network marketing business. Now, if you've been around the block even once, right? And this is your second go around. You've seen this, all right? You've seen one or more of these things, okay? And they can be positive or negative changes. We're not just saying that these certain things happen and it's bad, okay? Right. But you have changes constantly, just in the last seven days, I can think of changes that happened with our tools, changes that happened with multiple companies that we that Christine and I rep for. Um, so it's this happens, and it, you want to change proof your business. So the first thing I want to talk about is: Have you ever been in a business where products or services, okay, were added, okay, removed? or changed, all right? Let me give you some examples, okay? And it, well, I'm going to give you some examples in both the positive and the negative, okay? I have been in companies, and we're currently in companies, where products have been added, okay? This is, is a good thing or a bad thing. You don't know. I'm going to tell you this right now. Because I, because I've been in the industry for as long as I've had, I've, had, I've been in companies, and I'm not going to name certain companies i'm not going to call out certain company like names but if i talk about them you might end up figuring out which, which <laughs> they are okay or were um some of them are not in business anymore some still are um where so much new so many things were added that it was made it it made it complicated to build the business because there were so many different ways of coming into the business now i've also been in companies where products were added and it made it easier because like maybe something that was there already was a little more challenging and then something new was added and we were able to like focus in on that one thing and it was you know made a huge difference to our business right so changes aren't always bad but they're not always good either it's sometimes things that you think are going to be a good change end up not being a good change and vice versa things that you're like i'm not really sure about that I'm not super happy about that and it ends up being the best thing that ever happened to the company to your network marketing business to your team you know so the point that we want to make is how can you change proof your business it doesn't mean that you stop you're going to stop these changes we do not control anything that goes on at any company we don't control what goes on with tools that we use for marketing um we have a marketing tool that christine and i've been using for a couple of years it's it's closing its doors at, the, at december 31st right it's not even a network marketing company it's just a tool that we use yep. right we don't have any control for that when we talk about change proofing your business i'm talking about when changes happen retaining your income and retaining majority of your team, regardless of the change, right? right? Another example where products can change, and I was just having this conversation with someone, so if you're listening, you know it was our conversation, where they decided not to rep for a nutritional company anymore because new ownership had taken over. And ever since the new ownership took over, they didn't feel like the products were up to the same 
quality, the physical vitamins and things that they were taking, they weren't getting the same um, vibe from them. They weren't feeling as good as they were before. So they think that they changed something in what? Probably the formula. And it was probably might've been the cut corners, right. unfortunately. And so they decided, even though they had a large check coming, that they weren't going to continue to put new distributors in. They didn't walk away from, you know, what was already there. You got to let people make their own decisions, right? Um, so products can be added, removed, changed, right? Um, Christina, I'm going to talk about this, uh, this next one, too. There's four things we want to talk about that can happen. So I already know that if you've been in network marketing, you've seen this happen. Products be add, removed, or changed, right? Compensation plans can change for the better or for the worst, okay? The companies have to do, number one, I will tell you, they have to do what they need to do to stay in business, right? So sometimes changes happen because the company needs a little more revenue. And you might think, well, that's not fair. You, if, you don't want, if you don't want that company to go away, you want them to be making money because that's like something a pet peeve of mine. Oh, the company's making so much money. I sure the heck hope so. Because if they're in the red, they're probably going to close their doors. You want your network marketing company at the corporate level to be making money. So they, but they sometimes change compensation plans. It also can be a legal thing. Legal team may have come in and said something has changed in law. We can't do this anymore. We have to adjust the compensation plan. However, that all being said, there are changes to compensation plans where myself, my business partners, we have decided not to rep for a company anymore. We had a compensation plan change that literally cut 90% of our money overnight it, yep. because they just changed the model. It went from a network marketing company to a direct sales model. Um, most companies know that they can't mess too much with the pay, right? They need to pay on time. Sometimes, you know, we've had little changes go on in the companies we rep for, just little ones, tweaks that really did not, I think it helped the company create more revenue without tanking away from the distributors, the IBOs or the affiliates or whatever. Um, but the point is, it happens, right? So the compensation plan you have today or the compensation plan you presented to your personally sponsored and to your team members could be different a year from now, all right? Leadership changes in the field. Christina, have you seen any leadership changes? I knew, let's talk to Christina because she's only been in network marketing for a few years. And we have leadership in different positions inside of network marketing. But have you ever seen a leadership change at all? I was part of a leadership change. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. Like, we've had leaders in the business have to step away for personal reasons. And we've had other people in the business who were not at that role have to step into that role to make sure that the business could continue to move forward. So, yes. <laughs> See, and Christina's only been, she's still in her first network marketing company, which I applaud. And I hope that that she never <laughs> has to go through right. you know, that company stays in business forever. Because I would love it if the first network marketing company I rep for was still in business, right? I mean, exactly. like, like Howie, if you're listening, Howie and I always say, like, these companies would have stayed in business or stuck to their original plan, we'd all be, like, in the trillionaire category right now, right? Because we've never failed a company that, at all. But these things do happen. Leadership can change in a lot of different ways, too. Like, I just talked about the conversation I had with another networker a week or two ago where the ownership of the company had changed and then they noticed a less quality product. Okay. So that happened at a corporate level. Now there's also stuff going on at a corporate level that you or and I and Christina and anyone else may not even be aware of. And that is their employees yep. coming and going. You might, for all we know that best employee ever was taking care of support. Right. And then they took a different job. And now someone else is in charge of support. Maybe support doesn't run as good as it used to or vice versa. Yep. Right. Or, or whatever. People are, they have different employees in charge of different things and they're in leadership roles within at the corporate level. That's it's going to change. It's like a TV show. You know, you have TV shows out there and people stop watching them sometimes if their favorite character leaves if their favorite character gets right. killed off. But then you have other 
shows that have changed characters constantly over the years. I'm just thinking of ones that have been around that maybe played for 15 years or more. Something like ER, they're, they yeah. constantly had new people coming in and out. Why did it still work? So let's talk about that in a little while. Why, why were people still watching even though the characters left, new characters came on? And why is something else, another TV show, last maybe an extra year when the main character leaves, right? We'll talk about it. Um, leaders that you look up to in your organization, I want you to be careful about putting any one particular leader up on a pedestal unless <laughs> it is the only reason you're there. Right. I have things that I, there is like, one, there's an educator on our platform. He is the reason I'm there. And if he was gone, I would probably be gone. But you know what? I'm going to tell people that. Right. Up front, right? Up front. But when you leaders leave, they take their teams with them. So you have right. leadership that I, I was in a company, it's no longer in business. One of the top earners decides to leave. It was like this total, excuse my friend, shit show for several weeks, mm -hmm. whether you were on his team or not, right? Because why is he leaving? Right. right. Is there something going on we don't know about? Right. And all this stuff going on. Leaders leave. They see a better opportunity somewhere else or a more complimentary opportunity or it's personal. We've yep. seen top leaders remove themselves because they've had health concerns and things exactly. like that. Um, but if you're like saying, oh, this leader, this leader, this leader, this leader, this leader, and it's all about that leader. If it is all about the leader, then just be honest. Like, I'm only here because he's here. Be honest about it. But if it's not, be careful because when they leave, you may lose some of your team if you touted that leader so hard. You also have right. leaders on your own team, like Christina was talking about, and they, we don't own people in network marketing. I hear people say, oh, I, I lost this guy. No, you didn't. You don't own people. You don't own people. They are, they are independent distributors, affiliates, business operators, whatever you call it, your company, you, you are not their boss. You don't lose people. They decide to go somewhere else because right. for whatever reason, but they could take a whole leg of your business. And all of a sudden your paycheck goes from this to this, right? From this to this, right? Because you thought that that one guy was going to build out that leg and you never had to think about that leg ever again, or you backed off doing any sponsoring yourself because you thought that you had hit the jackpot right. with somebody. When every time you're looking at somebody with dollar signs in your eyes, whether it's a leader in your organization, a leader above you, a leader sideline, or prospects, yep. it's an issue. Don't look at people with dollar signs in your eyes. Leaders don't always stay, right? That's another change. And then the last thing is, Christina, let's just talk about number four. Listen, just companies, tools, marketing methods. That is something that you are going to see in growing businesses. Growing businesses do the same thing that we do. They try new things. Maybe they change their marketing because they want to target a different audience. We talked about targeting your audience, right? Maybe some of the tools that they're using, that we were using, got upgraded, right? And now there's a bit of a, a learning curve because there's something new, right? And when these things happen, we don't always know in the beginning if it's going to be for the best, but just stay positive and keep the chats positive is the, the number one piece of advice inside of your organization. <laughs> right, focus on the solution. And if there is a change, Give it some time to see how that's going to pan out for you. You don't want to like prejudge. So when I'm, we're talking about how to change proof your business, it doesn't mean cha uh, stopping change from happening. Right. It, it means that change is inevitable. It will happen. I guarantee it a hundred percent. I'll put a million dollars on it that your something in your business will change. The people, the systems, the company, the comp plan, the products, the services added, removed enhanced, whatever, something is going to change. So this isn't about stopping change. It's about change proofing your business because what we were just talking about, a leader leaves a, leaves a company, let's say. Everybody's in an uproar. 
Why did he or she leave? What's going on? They take a bunch of people with them. They're above you, they're below you. The sign light, it, it's like it's like the scuttlebutt, right? If you're a military Navy person, right? It's a scuttlebutt and people are talking, right? You have to create, and what you should be doing, and you don't have to do anything, you should create realistic expectations. If you go back to last week, Christina and I went through the Lou, right? The letter yep. of understanding that we go through with people. And one of the items is, that things are changing on the ever evolving internet and no system is perfect. We deal with technology and people, technology is not perfect. And we all know people are not perfect and there are, will be changes. And sometimes we swap out tools. Christina and I are right now in the middle of going from a tool that isn't going to be in business after December 31st to learning something new. And there's a learning curve for us, right? right. Just because it's a different interface, Right. But if you give realistic expectations at the beginning of the process with your team and ongoing talk about realistic expectations, right. that change can happen. If people know change can happen. Right. Right now we're dealing with changes in a lot of different areas. Right. right. And like you said, good or bad. I don't prejudge. Let's just see how di different things play out. Right. Be right. willing to try this stuff out before you make a judgment. Actually get in and get your hands dirty. Press the buttons before you make a judgment. Because like we talked about earlier, some of the changes are for reasons in the background that only people government high might know about. And the company is saying quietly, we need to just change this. So here it is. Right. And sometimes it's because maybe the change came in place because the company listened to the people who actually use the products and people said, hey, this would make X, Y, Z better. Right. Right. So just because you might not know why the change came or where it came from doesn't necessarily mean it was because of something bad or good, but get your hands dirty. Be willing to get in and press the buttons see what the change is and how you can, like in my mind, I want to see how I can benefit from it. When it's a change, if the company thinks that this is going to be good, let me see where the pros and cons are for me, right? And then see how I can transfer and give that information down to my team so that we all can benefit from it before we go into the situation saying, hey, we might not be able to, you know, give it a chance. It, it came up for a reason. Yeah. And if what you want to be focusing on is growing mindsets and skills throughout your organization, instead of like touting everything about whatever particular company or companies like it's this, it's that growing mindset and skills. And I'm talking about marketing skills, leadership skills, sponsoring skills, duplication skills, multiplication of leader skills, all these kind of skills that's what you're want to be focusing on. Christina and I are going to start having a couple of trainings a week. One of them is going to be open to the public yep. where we are getting these skills out to you and doing training. And we're always working on these skills ourselves because we never want to be asking you to do something that you weren't, we're not willing to do ourselves. Right. But if we're focusing on building skill sets within the organizations, the changes don't matter. The changes are going to happen. When I first started marketing on the internet, um, excuse me, <clears throat> when I first started marketing on the internet, you could buy, literally purchase lists of names of people who had asked for information generically, though, on the internet, and you can load them up into an autoresponder. And if, you know, I'm going to date myself, but we used to buy leads from ProStep, which was a network marketing company that also paid us to refer people to buy leads. And it was perfect because we were able to create an income stream plus get the leads we needed, right? And we would load them up in an autoresponder. And the next thing you know, you know, we'd have a ridiculous amount of enrollments, which came because of a whole nother set of circumstances, which we're gonna actually talk about tomorrow because of the mix of products that we had at the time, we were able to enroll a lot of people and make a lot of money. But the point is, you can't do that anymore. You can't just buy a list of generic right. names that have opted in generically and there's a load them up in your autoresponder. It's considered spam, but we could legally do that. As soon as that happened where the can spam act, we had to adjust our strategy, right? But the skill set still remained the same. It's still about driving traffic with certain types of products and services to get 
front end, low end sales, and then convert them into the back end to find out who your leaders are and some other things that you're doing. It's still about that. It was just, we couldn't just buy lists and upload them. We had to adjust our marketing strategy to get the traffic over and we started doing it in a different way, right? Because it's all about growing mindset and growing skills throughout your organization. And when something like that happens, your whole organization doesn't fall apart. Now, Christina, you, I, I want to have Christina talk about this next thing because she is really, really good at this. You want to pay attention. Right. So like one of my favorite things to do as far as change proofing your business is to create a community and a culture. If you create a community of people who are open minded and and I'm not I'm not saying singular focused in a bad way, but singular focus, meaning we all have the same goal in goal, right, in mind as it relates to the business and why we're there, having that culture and that community that you've created can move your business through any ups and downs that the business might go through. Because as we said earlier, if there is a change that happens in the business, because of the culture that you've created, your team is already solution oriented. Your team's already looking around, well, they must have changed this for this, let's try it out. How good is this going to be? What can we do? Instead of woe is me woe is us, what's happening, right? So, and then inside of your, the culture that you create, the community that you create, giving everybody that's involved the ability to have a voice is extremely important because you want to let everybody know that you value whatever they have to bring to the table. As long as it's constructive criticism, all criticism is welcome. That's how you grow and develop and maneuver and just pivot during some of the changes that happen in the business that are outside of your control. So it's very important to create a community of people who you surround yourself with, who have that let's grow mindset so that those new people that are coming in feel comfortable and welcome and invited. And they feel like they're in the right place. They have the support that they need, right? Because we've, we've been through some ups and downs in some different communities, different projects that we're in. But because we were there together, it made it that much simpler. We found out what was going to work best for us based on what was going on. So creating that community and the, just the culture that you want in your business is extremely important because no matter what's going on, as long as you guys are on the same page, you know, you'll know you be able to move forward. Whether you have to sit down and work on moving forward or not, you'll always be able to move forward and not have so much attrition in your business too. Mm-hmm. Because that's the thing. People stick around when they feel like, like people have their best, like the leadership has their best interest mm-hmm. at heart. Even like for us, because we trade crypto, the market took a nice little dip this summer. Our teams didn't pull back that much in the amount of people that were in because they understood and they were prepared for what was coming because of the leadership, because of the (coughs) information that we kept them in, because of the community finding other ways to benefit from the situations that were changing in the background. So it's really important just to make sure that you're surrounded by the right people and give the people coming in that same notion. You know, it's all about the camaraderie. And I think using that cryptocurrency example, it was even more important for our community to have that community when the market's moving sideways, because, you know, the people that we did who didn't want to stick around were the people that were just, I think, hoping for like some kind of ridiculously fast gains with not a whole lot of work, right? Our Our core community understands that you, it's, you have to, anybody can slap some money in you know, to a cryptocurrency and, and see it possibly go up. Right. And, and and we are in a market maybe like earlier this year where even crappy crap, crap coins, you could throw crap at crap coins and still make some money. It's a, we have a little bit of a bias because our mentor does the necessary research to find good coins and social media doesn't. So we have a little bit of a bias. We do, <laughs> but it's like, you know, there was the, earlier this year, like, everybody and their mother is throwing money into the crypto markets and probably doing okay. We help like our, our mother, my mother-in-law, I say our, but it's actually my husband's mother and my mother-in-law get some crypto. And I was very strategic on what we had her buy. I wasn't going to let her buy a bunch of crap. Right. Because 
it's it's the the point I'm trying to make though is that because we that could be a whole tangent like not even on this subject right but here's the thing when things aren't going the you know going to the moon whether it's in crypto or everything else that's when culture and community is even more important because adversity is part of everything right struggle is part of everything uncertainty it can be part of everything right and community and culture is really really important and tying into that being honest and authentic and, and, and having integrity in everything that you do is also a way to change proof your business meaning that when changes happen you are honest about them you want to be positive with your team but if there is something that is happening that you are not a fan of it's okay to say that in a positive way. Right. But I think that, you know, some of the stuff that goes on in the industry is that we always have to be hyping everything up. We don't. And I have seen lots of leaders who with integrity leave money on the table because they had like, like I can think, I'm not going to say the company again or the person, a suite of products. And this particular leader is like, I love everything that we do, but I am not a fan of this. If you're a fan, cool, but I'm not a fan of this particular thing that we've got, but we've got this going on. So this is for me, this is where my focus is. There's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's being honest with people. I've also seen people leave, um, and uh, leave potential money on the table. And I'll give you an example because I leave it on the table and Christina leaves it on the table because we aren't money oriented. Right. Inside of our education platform, there's diff- a couple of different levels that you can get involved in. I do not push the highest level unless the highest level, and I'm talking dollar wise, mm-hmm. makes sense right. for that person. And, you know, uh, I had a prospect who's a networker say to me, why don't we have everybody get in at that elite level? I said, because the elite level isn't for everybody. It's not for everybody. And And so I'm not going to be, that would be inauthentic and dishonest. You're doing your your prospects and the new people joining your business a disservice by having them sign on to things that won't benefit them. And it's not to say that it won't benefit them later. But initially, when you have that conversation, bringing people in, you should be asking the questions that you need to ask to get to know this person, to see what products and services you represent is going to fit them and their budget best. They can always upgrade. Like that, that is, uh, Chris right. I it's, agree mm-hmm. that that is a, it's a bit of a pet peeve for us when people push the highest ticket thing, because your bottom line is what you're worried about. Be honest with people and you actually, you catch way more flies with honey. Promise. If you look at what we do in our silver business, you can buy, you could get on auto ship for like, I think it's between one and 10 mm-hmm. coins a month. We yep. have people at all different levels, right? If someone says to me, my budget for my business is $600 a month and you know, we build multiple income streams. I'm not going to say buy $600 a month of silver, Right. Right. Because I want to make sure they have a budget for all the things we need to get involved with. They may only be on one or two auto ship coins, but then they can work up to having that silver paid for through their commissions and work up to 10 coins on auto ship for mm-hmm. free, getting that silver for free. Right. Right. But that might not be how they start. I'm, I, I, Christina and I like have so much in common as far as we want to do what's best for people's individual situations. Everybody has different money, different time, different skill sets, different mindsets. You and as Kurt says, you got to meet people where you where they are. Right. We want people to be up at the same place we are, right? You guys know I just dropped a couple months ago ten thousand dollars for mentorship. I know that everybody can't come in and, and drop ten thousand dollars for mentorship. Right. That's that. Like, do I think that you need it? Yeah, I think it would be. Do I think that you need it? Maybe not need, but could benefit. Sure. Yeah. But if your budget is four or five hundred dollars a month, that's not that where you want to be dropping it at this point. Right. You want to be doing other things. And so, you know, that's why also having different price points and different value points. Right. Are available. And in some cases. The higher a higher price thing may not even be more valuable. Right. Because, but you know, 
it, it should it sounds like it should be but if you take a look at like what we do with education the higher price point has so much in it that if you're brand spanking new it's like going to be in a kid in the candy store like oh, i'm gonna pick all this stuff like we would rather have you focus in like one area first right so while the higher thing it is more valuable and has more things there it might scatterbrain people so it's it, and then for for someone like ourselves, we want the elite membership. Let's say because we want access to more tools because we're more advanced, right? right? And so we know how to use them. We have good time management skills, so we can actually get in. You know, right? So I mean, we're using that as an example, but you have to apply it to you, your business, and your company, right? Um, I know somebody who got into a nutritional company and bought twenty five thousand dollars worth of product right away, and I had a relative of mine who is a networker. She said they're not supposed to do that. No you're not supposed to try to present a big large package like that but they are people are free to buy as much right. stuff as they want and this person is a multimillionaire and wanted a lot of product right up front so he did that yep. right everybody's if someone else is struggling just to buy the 200 dollars starter pack right with a couple of vitamins and the shampoo in it right so we, everybody's at a different level um, and it's okay because the network marketing to me levels the playing field because it's still about doing the work, right? Putting the effort and the energy in um, and being able to, like Christina say, upgrade as you go. Start with wherever you are yep. and then reinvest. Reinvest your money into other things that can help you automate more stuff. The more things you can uh, pay for, the more automation you can have, right? Automating your social media posts, automating your emails, automating other things, even paying people on Fiverr to build out capture pages and landing pages for you. That's a thing, right? Yep. But you have to get some money going first. And if you started with a lot of money, a lot of people who have the money don't have the time. That's what happens. Like people who yep. come to us that like, oh, I, I had someone, he says, I got $20,000. What should I do with it? I'm like, well, first of all, you don't need $20,000, right? Right. To start. Um, but yeah, I mean, we should maximize every automated tool we can, because this person's like, I literally only have about five hours a week. He was an executive for a company. Right. He so it's like, let's automate as much stuff as we can with your money. Right. If you don't have as much money, you can't automate as much stuff. Right. And so it's just a trade off of time for money. And then as you go, you're reinvesting. And so the, I guess the point is change proofing your business giving realistic expectations to your team that the information I'm giving you now, we are always enhancing. Um, and us as a team, us at leadership, the company is there will be changes. Expect them. Yep. It will happen. And if you're honest with people and they, they stick around because they trust you, you want people, you want that trust because at the end of the day, your, your character and reputation is what you need to protect more than anything else yep it's all you got <laughs> it's really all you got you take it with you wherever you go so tomorrow we're going to expand and expound upon this right so we're change proofing our business by creating you know the right expectations and and growing a culture and a community with the right mindsets the right skills being honest and authentic in things that we do, being real with people, telling the truth, right? And tomorrow we want to talk about how, how to choose the right mix of companies and products to promote. Because, you know, we are here to help network marketers fix their businesses. We know you're struggling. Um, and it may be just, you know, Christina, I might look at your business and we say, look, you're, you're on the right track. You just need a couple little tweaks. So we're going to talk about like the mix of things that you should be promoting to really maximize your efforts. And we're going to do that tomorrow. And so right. that's our show for today. Now, if you guys are serious home business entrepreneurs who struggle creating customers, enrollments, leaders, and just income in your business, we told you that we're going to get go over with you and give you a step-by-step -step how to create automatic enrollments, sales, how to build multiple income streams in a course that we're going to throw for you guys all day. Okay. So make sure that you subscribe to pipsforbrunch.com, the newsletter, because everybody who's already subscribed will get access to that information early. Okay. Because space is definitely going to be limited. Um, we do want to make sure that we have time to do Q&A and things like that. 
So space is limited for that reason. But make sure that you guys are staying plugged in to that newsletter. We give away a lot of information that we don't do on the show, that we don't do on our social medias inside of that newsletter as well. So like Christy said, that is going to wrap us up for today. But I hope you guys are having an awesome and productive morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Bye. Bye.